Go Jackson. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode, the official podcast, episode 202. Andrew's back from retirement. Let's all give him a warm welcome back. Andrew, how was your uh, welcome back, Andrew? Hiatus? Oh, you were talking about me. Hello, Andrew. Oh, hi. Give yourself. Yes. Give <sighs> welcome yourself home. And here. Hello. I Welcome back. I just I knew that the show couldn't go on without me, even though agreed. it easily could. No, agreed. It can't go on without you, Andrew. So I, you're like I the came sticky back. glue that holds us all together. If it weren't for you, we'd be uh, gone to the wind. That's right. The the overused sticky glue that keeps everyone to the ground and restrains them from their potential. You need that in every show. Yeah, it keeps you grounded. Yeah, I'm the I'm the Venus flytrap that caught the bird instead. <laughs> that was supposed to fly high. <laughs> what, what does that mean? I, I get pretty specific. I'm, I'm trying to come up with this beautiful poetic metaphor of how I'm going to bring us all back down to earth, keep us grounded, because, I don't know, la last week's episode was probably probably a miraculous, amazing achievement in podcasting, but I'm here to set us straight, you know, keep us in order. People expect certain routines from us. For, all right, let me, let me look at the checklist here. I've got a big checklist. I printed it out. How much did you talk about masturbating last week? Not at all, actually. My, see, like, what the fuck yeah, is wrong with you guys? Not. I leave for one week and this happens? Yeah. Really? How much did you talk about shitting? I don't believe that. Talk, talking I think Charlie about, just made that up. Talking about really? routines, you weren't technically gone from last week's episode since you still did the three ad <laughs> I still did the, the worst <laughs> yeah. parts of the show. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. The, the best parts. Oh. Yeah, what the hell? Or best, depending on yeah. who you are listening to the show, I guess. Or who's paying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't make us fire you. That's true. Did you talk about shitting last week? Nope. Oh my god. We didn't talk about any bodily functions, actually, I don't think. <laughs> no, that's incorrect. How I do believe you remember I, that. No, 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 he's wrong. He's wrong. He's talking out of his ass. We did talk briefly, I believe, <laughs> about my shitting habits, how I shit big shits. Do you remember that very oh, briefly? Yeah. yeah, we talked about uh, shits for like 10 minutes, Charlie. I don't remember that at all. Yep, Charlie, ta Charlie taps was... out immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was claiming he takes gigantic shits, but he still has not provided us with any photographic evidence. I he mean, claimed uh... they were as big as, as his fists, remember? Yeah, oh, I yeah, do remember that back. conversation. I don't think that was last week, though. Andrew, does that sound familiar to you? Uh, it sounds like something Jackson would lie about for attention, yeah. What, taking big shits? Yeah. What yeah. the fuck? Everyone what knows kind of big attention men, am I looking for? Big men <laughs> take big shits. Everyone knows that. So Jackson what? wants to be a big man and say, look at my big dumpy. That's not true. Everyone's capable of taking big shits. It's more not about true. it's yeah. more about the intestines, really. Mm, it's it's true. more it's much more rare for smaller, weaker humans to take big shits. But like big men are notorious for just unloading massive ass once they're done, say, working out or maybe fixing a boat or you know doing manly things. Why fixing a why was fixing a boat one of the examples? Well, why don't you come up with a more manly example of something to do, Jackson? I'm waiting. Taking yeah. big shits. In my big toilet for big <laughs> men, wiping my big ass with big toilet paper. That really definitely sounds like a big man. I think Jackson's on to something. I disagree. Sounds like you're overcompensating. Because yeah, he doesn't know how to right. fix a boat. <laughs> yeah, like real men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I wanted to overcompensate, do you, why would the place I start be my, uh, my turds? Stop I deflecting. I, I stop deflecting. <laughs> stop avoiding the question, Jackson, how many boats have you fixed in your lifetime? Not a single boat. Wow, uh, what a small, not, tiny baby man. That's I'm not even sure how they float. It's magic to me. What a bitch. What a wimpy girl. Uh, Jackson, you dropped your purse on the way to the recording studio today. Yeah. When's the last time any of you guys have been on a boat? Or like a ship? Ten years ago, I think, maybe. Uh, roughly the same, yeah. Really? Yeah, I, th I think it's the same for me. Maybe even more. Whoa, 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 what about like ferries? Probably like in the last three years yeah, I've been on a ferry. That's a boat. That counts. Yeah, that's because you are a ferry. You that's only ride ferries, you don't fix them. Okay. Are we, uh, are we, um, are we including <laughs> like cruise ships and stuff or just like a regular ass boat? Well, cruise, cruise ships are boats. Any, yes. I guess. Okay, yeah. Just because I can't remember the last time I've been just traveling on water. Yeah, probably like. And I was thinking about ago. that because, I, like, 
I wonder which one would scare me more, airplanes or boats at this point. Like maybe I have, I mean, I'm fucking terrified of dark waters, so maybe I, my fear of that is even bigger than flying. There's never been a single boat accident. You're fine. You're going to be safe. <laughs> Boats are fine. That's They're true. perfectly safe. They've been around for thousands of years. Yeah. Uh, back in ca- prehistoric times, not a single boat accident. We have been but sailing longer than we've crashes. been flying. You can't do 9-11 with boats, Kaya. It's physically impossible. Are you not challenging with that attitude? Them? Yeah. Isn't everything in Australia coastal? Don't you have a lot of coastal cities? I bet yeah, somebody could right. 9-11 something over well, there isn't the that un- uh the that only one thing you get a crash into looks... is like docks i guess isn't that one theater or whatever <gasps> yeah, the, city the fuck you guys have yeah you're right oh, yeah, yeah that yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. looks like a bunch of eggshells well Could i believe into that wow. with i believe a, the, the architect ship, right? modeled them after orange peels if you want to know the uh wait the really? background history of that why orange peels and seashells so you were kind of right Half right. Wait, really? Yeah, because so, he said it, he said it embodies Australian spirit and and what what the Australian coast is like. Orange peels, orange and peels, seashells, yeah. <laughs> He's right on the money. I'd should've, say. Should have modeled it after a gigantic squid or something, or a jellyfish with stingers yeah. Yeah, and claws just and death. fangs. Just death. Yeah. But it yeah, I, like I, Skeletor's I, castle. I suppose uh, if someone were feeling brave or adventurous, they could perhaps crash a cruise ship into the Sydney Opera House. I'm not sure anyone would you would recommend care. it. I'm not sure anyone would care at this point. <laughs> the Sydney Opera House is kind of like, I mean, yeah, I guess it is a tourist hotspot still. Still, most Australians don't think about it. But you'd miss it if someone 911 did. Yeah, but like, this, I I think people would be able to get the fuck out of the Sydney Opera House if a if a cruise ship was like about to rail it, whereas nine eleven was like a surprise attack. Like yeah, if you, you can go, see the boat coming. Yeah, if you're gonna die, if you're gonna die from a cruise ship nine eleven, I think you got problems with like awareness. I suppose. So Is that I don't true think, though? How fast do those go? Not. F- not fast enough to outrun, but I guess you would be able to run away from the coast at least. So you. Well, I think you'd have plenty of time if you but... saw like a rogue cruise ship coming right no, no. at you. Yeah, you could see it from uh, so uh, far okay. away. Okay, let me rephrase. I was talking about in like a sense if you were both on land together, uh, just going at the the speed that the cruise ship kind of cruises at, you wouldn't be able to outrun it because it goes. Oh like, no! Yeah, its cruise speed is faster than your your speed. Yeah. Okay. Obviously. So, but okay. How about this? You turn, okay, so you, whatever, it's, you, you learn from the mistakes that the terrorists made on Flight 93, and you take over the ship properly, you kick off all of the passengers if you need to, turn off all the lights, get a head start on the opera house, like, uh, so not a head start, but like a run-up, speed up full speed, and it has to be night, so, you know, they can't see the ship at night. If the lights are off, and then I guess you take them by surprise. <laughs> Why don't we just fly a plane into the opera house? Because it's been done. No, need... that's been done. Fuck your into the original. opera house. Uh, when... <laughs> Not into the opera house, but you know. It's okay, how about this? Many plane least, if it has to be aerial, how about a zeppelin? How about oh, a zeppelin? That'd be great. Crash a giant blimp into the fucking opera house. Well, well, what was a zeppelin that did explode? <laughs> that kind of. Oh, Hindenburg. Out of the Hindenburg. Hindenburg. Hindenburg, yeah. Yeah, that looks cool. I, I actually think that would do more damage than the um, than a cruise ship. Well, yeah, it would, it. if we did it, it the it? same way, the Hindenburg, it would turn into a giant fucking flaming fireball. Yeah. yeah a lot of people don't remember the Hindenburg killed the... a shitload of people. Yeah, the people on board, or not. Yeah. Who would it kill in the opera house? Yeah, it would 30... just, the fire would just kind of lie on top of the ceiling yeah there there was uh i just looked it up there were 97 passengers and 36 of them died when that thing crashed so not even all of them holy shit okay yeah. zeppelin well, it suck cr- it crashed I mean, into you- wasn't it like a uh like it ended up hitting pretty much a street light so people just like walked out what yeah well yeah, yeah it looks like people are just walking out of the the gif i'm oh, looking at right now okay huh. yeah Interesting, man. That so wait, so it didn't really cr- 
burn up in the sky. It was actually on the either like, way the though. Ground. I mean, the, the it, zeppelin. It, well, it's, it, it looks like a gigantic. The... Go ahead. Dude, that thing isn't gonna kill anyone. It looks like a gigantic paper mache uh, mache I mean, egg. People. I mean, it, it exploded in the sky and then fell to the ground. It just wasn't that high up yet, I mean, so it kind of burned the rest yeah, on the all right, ground. Well, well, all right, let's say it explodes in midair or whatever, or even it explodes on the opera house, then it's still gonna burn the opera house down and kill people, probably. I, yeah, I, but like, I mean, a blimp is just kind of like a giant fucking bomb by that point if you use it that way, because it's just a big sack of flammable gas. Well, yeah. Yeah, but that's yeah, what we but are if using it just it for. fell if it just fell on the opera house ceiling it'll it probably wouldn't even collapse the ceiling it'll just slowly burn its way down that'll give people plenty of time to evacuate and the least zeppelin, favorite I don't think building in australia um the most what i was asking jackson's least favorite building in australia oh uh. I mean, it's not an interesting answer, but like the the Q one building in on the Gold Coast is just a giant eyesore. It's the largest building in Australia, though, so that's kind of <laughs> cool. But it just kind of looks like a giant pencil. What's it called? Did you the want Q1? me to? Did, yeah, Q one. Did you want me to come up with a funny answer or something? Why? Why would you ask that? Well, I don't know. You just had like a lot of rage about the Sydney Opera House. I kind of assumed it was like your least favorite building there is. No, hell no, Jesus. That's uh, that's the Q one is just that's history. It's a regular ass skyscraper again. Has been done. Yeah, it's, it's just, just kind of like an work. I don't think a zeppelin would. Okay, yeah, I feel you, but you know, we're not doing city planning here. This is supposed to be a terrorist attack to teach. No, the I was just answering Charlie's question. Very, uh, he's a very random question about which <laughs> one, well, the, the buildings in You're Australia is my down least favorite. One, Jackson. I well, give give me a cruise boat and we'll see what happens. We'll see. It is on the coast. <laughs> Maybe I could build a ramp in the ocean and ramp it over the coastline <laughs> <laughs> into Q1. <laughs> you better watch out. I think. I think oh, the, the main. On you. The main, uh, yeah. like, uh, boating disasters, I guess, are when cruise ships tip over or when, like, um, freight ships get, you know, uh, pirated. You know, pirates mm -hmm. board them and stuff well, like that's, that. Well, that's that's a uh, that's all that happens with um, boats. That's a numbers game by that point. I mean, a cruise ship tipping over is definitely going to kill more people than say just like a, a yacht because there's thousands of people on a cruise ship. Yeah. Yeah, and yachts generally don't go out that far, crossing oceans. Yeah. So what's the point? What about a train? Could we like? I wonder how Tra long it what would take us to covertly. I listen. How right. long would it take us to covertly lay down a trail of <laughs> train tracks in the middle of the night, steal a train, and then crash it into it's, the opera? It's pretty house. hard to steal a train, seeing as they're already on tracks. <laughs> well, that's what he's saying. Lay, lay your own. Yeah, he's, he's saying we'd like Looney yeah. Tunes the tracks yeah. off into a different direction. So, so let's let's cut out the middleman. We we do this like a blitzkrieg. <laughs> we do it as it happens. We find a track running near the Sydney Opera House, and then as it's driving, we get in front of it with a truck and just start laying down like our own train track out of the back of the Ooh. truck and steer it off course and plow it into the Opera House. I love that. That's a wily e. Coyote trick right yeah. there. Yeah. Fuck but stealing like, the train. Just okay, like what? do it on, on site. Just do it, you know? Trains are known to be pretty fast and heavy as well. So is you it, could it try is... That's true. Yeah, so if you trucks. wanted to get really creative, you could do it like Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 where you build like a theme park nearby <gasps> and don't finish a roller coaster and just launch the coaster at the opera house. I like that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great idea. <laughs> that's actually my favorite. Yeah, I like that. Roller Coaster Tycoon, that motherfucker. You guys remember when one of the games didn't allow you to do that? I think they fixed that immediately. I think... What yeah, a travesty. It was like 4 that did that. Wait, there's... No, what? wait. There's no Roller Coaster it? Tycoon 4. There it doesn't yeah, exist. It, it's yeah, a phone is. game, and it's terrible. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was Roller Coaster World. Roller Coaster Tycoon World. No, it's just called Roller Coaster... Well, oh, you're right. It's Roller Coaster yeah, it Tycoon World. 4 Mobile, and it's bad. It wasn't like a uh, an actual sequel. Yeah, it was like they took it and then they mobile gamified it, so it was just like super basic bitch. 
That game used to be so good. That series used to used be so to. good. Used mean, to? Whoa, whoa. Well, I mean, it still exists. There's still yeah. a great... Roller Coaster yeah. Tycoon 2 Architect is still is... legitimately one of the greatest simulation games ever made. It's just, You can fucking do it anything is. you want in that yeah. game. It's so good. And if you want a modern version, some indie developer made uh, Parkitect. It's uh, basically Roller Park Coaster Architect Tycoon 2, but looks even better. Oh, that's great. So I like that idea, Charlie. Um, like... What kind of a ride would it be, though? Like, what kind of a roller coaster would you build, and would you would it have loops before and after? Um, I'm not sure. Like I, before I, the I, launch, I'm, just just well, to show off. Yeah, no, but the people on board are dying. You may as well give them a fun time before they do. Well, it doesn't have to be people on board yeah. the roller coaster. Plus, no the one's going to get point? on an un. Well, no one's going yeah, to get the, on yeah, an unfinished roller coaster. I, yeah, I thought we were doing a Charlie. Then it's not really. Something. Yeah, Charlie. Then it's not a real 9/11 someone has to get hijacked so first it has to be a real ride with real people getting on and then <laughs> they the have to pay for the admission yeah have to, that's fucked up yeah and oh then the four God. of us have to be on board as well one of us strapped <clears throat> with a bomb and the others with knives <laughs> and then we take it over <laughs> kai kai has got a point it has to be a famous roller coaster to make a cultural impact I want to turn on CNN and the news anchor is like the great American scream machine was found in the city, uh, <laughs> Sydney Opera House today. <laughs> Hundreds died. Like if it's just a random roller coaster, no one's going to give a fuck. But if you if you steal the Hulk from Universal <laughs> Studios and slam it into the I don't know, the fucking Florida Everglades, then people will care. What if what if as we're like mid-air with the cars and we've launched it the president authorizes it to be shot down <laughs> <laughs> f-16 jets fly overhead the sydney opera house oh that'd be cool that would be amazing we construct a roller coaster track that's just like so tall and so long that it actually ends up becoming like bullet we fire it at targets across the world <laughs> <laughs> be sick. I love that. I wonder if we could like this is the most retarded anti-science thing we've probably ever uh, oh. about to say. But what if we took over CERN and like turned the particle accelerator into a I don't know fucking roller coaster cart accelerator instead and see if we could, we could shoot it out at over the speed of light. There's we can no also accuracy um, then. We're just like blindly firing shit out of sound and does it and have to be a roller coaster <laughs> yeah oh yeah it does well, yes well, we could we could fucking yes. we could turn it into like a double whammy we could get euthanasia patients or fucking old people who want to die and put them on the coaster and they get to go out with a bang It'd yeah but perfect. we're also launching yeah, it like like buildings and shit <laughs> they don't have like they don't want to die <laughs> I just, well, it doesn't have to be at buildings. You can just like launch them into space. Yeah, I, I, I love the image of all these old people on a roller coaster going wee, and then they just fucking explode into oblivion because it takes there, off there, at four hundred miles an hour. There is a hypothetical roller coaster designed by someone that euthanizes people. Yeah, the euthanasia roller coaster. It did a bunch of loops until your fucking brain passed out from the pressure and died. Yeah, so they don't even have to fucking launch them. You just do loops until they die. I Wait, think was that, that intentional? Or but that was doesn't it a kill other people, flaw? Jackson. Well, the they, whole point they didn't is, actually make it. The whole point is we're weaponizing oh. this. Oh. We turn this against yeah, the so, okay, How about we launch trains into the Middle East? <laughs> 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 what a, could we make a rail gun? Like for carts? Well, they I imagine you probably could. They have powered launchers for cars, like roller coasters where they start going fast immediately so we could just turn that into a railgun sure fuck it why not okay all right let's do that cancel the episode but, well we gotta get to work we'll we see you guys later the best 9-11 ever <laughs> rail carts that's uh, railgun carts roller coaster railgun coaster well, right into the Sydney Opera House. Sorry, Jackson. Well, Kaya, do you have a suggestion if I wanted to look up someone to help me build this railgun roller coaster? Uh, we're going to need a lot of, you know, foot soldiers and such. Man. We're going to need an architect. We're going to need artists for the concept art and the media relationships. And <laughs> PR. We're going to yeah. need yeah. HR, <laughs> PR. Yeah, we're going to need to really plug Someone this. tell us how stupid we are. Someone to spin this Unfortunately, into a we're all, you know, we don't have that big of a budget being the you know small four-man terrorist team that we are entrepreneurs no. yeah so we could go to fiverr perhaps andrew oh maybe 
I mean, Fiverr is an online marketplace that connects businesses with freelancers offering hundreds of digital services, including graphic design, copywriting, web programming, film editing, and more. So maybe we could dig through their repository of talented people and find who we need for our job of making a railgun roller coaster. 2020 has been a year of uncertainty, boys. So how can your business plan for the unexpected and operate virtually? Well... Fiverr's going to help you. It's going to help you find the right talent because normally that can be time consuming, frustrating, and expensive. And it can often be difficult to keep up with the current best modern practices to maximize your digital presence. So if you out there are trying to steal our billion dollar idea of a railgun roller coaster or make your own brilliant idea. Too bad we already copyrighted it yeah. on Fiverr. Copyrighted it 50 times. We found people on Fiverr to do that. We find people on Fiverr to do a lot of things, actually. I am currently <laughs> I, I found this this one pretty interestingly. I'm currently working on a project where I need someone to speak Mandarin, and you what can just, fuck? yeah, you can just go on there and type in a language, and you'll find translators, people who will narrate in a different language, people who will write text for you that's accurate. Like Fiverr, I've, I've been using Fiverr a lot lately and you can just type in what you need and you will find people who will do mm -hmm. it for a, a nominal fee and you can compare reviews between them and pricing. You can easily just find someone who will do what you want at the price you want to pay. I, I've fallen in love with Fiverr over this last month. And if you want to fall in love with Fiverr in this month or any month, whenever you feel like it, you can check out fiverr.com and receive 10% off your order by using code official. That's F I V E R R.com code official for all the digital services you need in one place. 10% off code official. Don't take our railgun roller coaster. Maybe you could build like a nuclear powered tilt a whirl or something. Like you could try to come close. <laughs> Do, do something. Yeah, but come it, up with your own design. Yeah, or, or hire someone on Fiverr to come up with a design for you. They'll have designers. Mm. Fiverr.com slash official, or sorry, Fiverr.com code official. I, I legitimately have fallen in love with Fiverr. Please check them out. I use them a lot now. Good. Charlie, do you? No. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask <laughs> on the on the subject of roller coasters. Did you ever get over your motion sickness, Charlie? No, God, no. Oh. How do you get How over motion sickness? How would know. you? There's probably different ways. Like maybe, I don't know, build a, up a tolerance again. Uh, I don't know if you really build a tolerance to motion sickness, though. <sighs> I, I just assumed it had something to do with the fluid in your ear. No, I don't think it has anything to do with my ears. It's just, uh, I don't know, I get motion sick. I, that's gonna really make it hard for you to hijack one of the carts then <laughs> yeah i think i'll just sit out this one uh, wait aren't we aren't we built we're, we're building it why do we have to hijack it well we're not gonna build the cars jackson because, we gotta oh divvy up God. the labor come on well at this point if we're, you if we're building the shit, what, well without the hijacking we went over this without the yeah, hijacking it's not a 911 yes so yeah, okay. we also we have to do we have a very small time frame too we have to do it before the cart leaves the rail gun <laughs> so this, they're strapped in on the railgun already, and then we hijack it halfway through <laughs> through their death loop. Yes, when they're about to get launched. Okay, I like it. So we do we do get people who want to die, like euthanasia people, on there. Yeah, and then we strip them from it at the last second from their dying wish or whatever. <laughs> Kick them out of it. Take it for ourselves. Oh well, my webcam just crashed. So that's cool. Well, that's okay. I'm I can't do mine. So. Well, you're also, not what, doing it's a just me and Charlie now. No, my my head really hurts. I had a migraine last night, so I can't have lights on right now. I'm doing this episode in darkness. You could have covered your face in like a blanket or something and been real <laughs> mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> Wear a little full mask. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sleeping mask, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm staring really cool. slightly off center the whole time <laughs> you should do that you should do that just flip it on right now and you're wearing like some kind of Halloween costume or some shit that'd be a great plot twist so how hard do your migraines suck um I go I go pretty much 40% blind when they're bad 
it it's weird. I don't know how to describe it. I went to a fucking migraine specialist a couple of years ago, and uh, I said, "Look, man, parts of my vision just disappear." And he pulled out this like big book, and he showed me this example where it was a, a page of text, but parts of it were just missing. I don't know how to describe it. And he said, "It looks like that, right?" And I was blown away because apparently it's a pretty common occurrence, but. You, you just can't see certain things. It's not like it's dark or black. It's just that not there. And so when my migraines are bad, I'm kind of like half blind. It sucks. Have you tried rubbing eucalyptus oil on your temples? Is that a, <laughs> is that a cure? Is that a thing? I remember reading about yeah, that a while oils. back. Yeah. Maybe, um, maybe I could jam can jam peppermint also... in my nose. Keep me awake for it. Yes. Put your feet in a you know, peanut butter jelly sandwich and wear <laughs> slippers for a day. That'll do it. When did essential oils start? Because I feel like it's a really recent trend. What? I have no, I, idea. I have no, I have no clue idea. what essential oils yeah. are still. Like, what are they? It's not they... recent. The, the idea of, like, using stupid shit to cure stuff has been always oh, around well, yeah, since humanity, yeah, homeopathic but. shit like that has been around since the dawn of time, but, like, I feel like essential oils is new. We've always had, like, oh, you do fucking chi or feng shui or the fucking, like, those massages that don't yeah. do anything. Like, there's always been, oh, yeah, put magnets on your head to increase your brain power, wear this watch and it stimulates blood flow. Like, all, there's always been that shit. But essential oils specifically, I've only heard of it in the last few years. Like, where did it, it just kind of came it, out of nowhere. Is it an actual thing? Is it, a, is it an actual, like, term for... Uh, well, it's it, to me, it sounds like just a marketing term someone's come up with. It is. I me mean, too. That's all it is. On, like, it sounds. Like, what even is an essential oil? Name that's one. What I, yeah, that's what I. Would yeah. Know. What, what oils they, do they, they don't, use? They like don't have flaxseed names. oil. They just call <laughs> essential oils. Yeah, but they must have a name. I'm, I'm sure they do. Like lavender. <laughs> that's good. scent. Vanilla. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, let's see. Someone is screaming in chat saying it means essence, not necessary. So essential doesn't mean necessary. It it means essence because of the smell. I'm not sure how accurate that is. Oh. So uh, the you don't rub it, you have to inhale it to be healed? No, you rub it. But maybe maybe okay. no, but maybe he's right. Maybe the rubbing it is the actual like it, that's what sets off the smell. What? No, they smell by they smell by default, Jackson. You just apply them topically. Maybe the smell goes in you. Okay, that way. Yeah, the smell I'm isn't important. It's just what they named after. Well, why is it in the name then? Why is it in the name? Why does uh, the name mean gonna smell? Call it? I don't know. Necessary oil. If it was so necessary to or, or rubbing oil, I'm sure rubbing oil actually exists. Actually, rubbing oil. That's like massage oil. Yeah, yeah, ma massage oil. That's what I'm thinking about, yeah. But well, there are... You used to have there, sex when you're desperate and out of lube. Uh, th there, are, there are things, uh, specifically oils, that only smell once you rub them. I'm, I'm sure those exist. And I'm sure they also don't work. Well, I don't even know what working means. What, what, what are these meant to cure? Andrew's headache. <laughs> so no, I'm, I'm kind of looking at lavender essential oil on Amazon says relaxation and relief. This doesn't really make any grand claims yeah. though. I'm, I'm reading into like people actually it's diving people into that what make they those claims. I'm reading into what they actually do, what people say they legitimately do, and apparently most of it is just like for anxiety and relaxation and meditation. Not actual medical benefits. So is it like the placebo effect then? Just because you believe it works, maybe it does work. Probably. For you specifically. I don't know. The Man, problem I don't think is, you can will cancer away. The problem is that most like dumb housewives or whoever the fuck fall into it go like the extra mile. Like they, they rub a little lavender on their wrists. So when they're hyping up, they calm down a little bit. And then they go, you know, if I rub this on my bad knee... Maybe it'll help that too. And it's like, they just think it helps. And then they, it gets worse and worse and people spew their own bullshit and you get this big circle until eventually you just have this That's whole hive mind around, oh yeah, I cured fucking cancer and AIDS with my essential oils blend. But it, so it only I'm takes... On... Yeah, okay. 
Sir, I'm on naturallivingfamily.com by uh, Dr. Z and Mama Natural Z. Natural Living mm-hmm. Family? So, that mm-hmm. sounds like a fucking cult. Essential family. Yeah, it does. Uh, so it says, to make an immunity slash cellul- cellular rejuvenation blend, start off with mixing equal parts of two to three of the oils below. It's basil, black pepper, <laughs> cardamom, cinnamon, Are you seasoning clary yourself sage, to be clove, co- cooked? Kettle. What the fuck? Yeah, by, <laughs> yeah, by a the witch fuck? in the woods. And then get in the this oven like that you preheated to 350 degrees. <laughs> 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 Garnish as needed. And serve, serve with a side of rice. Remember to uh, you know baste yourself throughout the process. <laughs> oh. Eat a lot too. Fatten yourself up. Yeah. Orange, oregano, peppermint, rosemary, sandalwood, tea tree, thyme. Hel- the fuck? Helichrysum? Helichrysum? Frankincense. Yeah, that's literally just... <laughs> this is seasonings. For, isn't frankincense the Christmas thing? Yeah, it's one of the things they gave to Jesus when yeah, he was born, yeah, so it has right. to work. That sounds pretty essential oh, to me, Kyle. that's why. I, yeah, that's fair. I guess. What is myrrh? I'll still go to a doctor. I don't what know. You Charlie, Andrew? you were a hardcore Christian in your youth. What's myrrh? <laughs> oh, I have no idea. I don't think even they know what myrrh Cause, is. Because they bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and I get the first two, but what's the third one? I don't know what the was fuck it, myrrh is. Was it myrrh like a local comedian around it the says joint? It says... They wanted to add <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It's a natural gum or resin extracted from a number of small thorny tree species. Oh yeah, let me have that over the gold. So it's a resin. Yeah, I'll I'll take that over the gold. Sounds good. Well, maybe uh, myrrh. Yeah, maybe fuck? myrrh was gold back then. Like it was as, as valuable Why? as gold. I don't know. That's don't stupid. Know. Oh hey, hello Lord Jesus, I brought you gold, my firstborn, my a pint of my blood, and also this piece of dog shit that I scraped from under my shoe. You want it? Call it myrrh. Oh shit, he was born today? I didn't get a gift. Uh, oh boy. I, ho- I hope the <laughs> Murr store's still open. Jesus kind of did get cucked by life, I guess, if the stories are accurate. How is... How is... The, how, how, how is the son of God... How does the son of God, like, lose to Roman soldiers? Jesus was cucked for your sins. <laughs> also, how much was like 30 pieces of silver even worth? Th- was it 30 or 13? <laughs> like, how, how much is that worth in today's money? Because I really want to no know idea. for how much money they actually sold them out. It was 30 pieces of silver. That's like, what, 30 cents? Oh, someone in chat says that it wasn't much and that was the point. I mean, <laughs> well, hey, man, 30 pieces of silver is 30 pieces of silver. Let's not undersell it. Yeah, it's 30 yeah, pieces of I, silver you know, Jesus didn't have before that. Yeah. For some reason. He didn't have it after either. <laughs> 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 the traitor did. <laughs> well, that sucks. Now, I guess his legacy is essential oils, among other things. Yeah. So how about toxins? Is because I hear toxins used in like everywhere. Is is that a sci- is that an actual thing in science or is it also one of those woo-woo things? Oh, you're like talking about like de- body- detoxifying Detox? and shit. Yeah. Oh. Nah. Not that's detox all necessarily, but it's like, oh okay, start on a keto diet and you know, within a week all the toxins will be flushed from your system. Like yeah, is that that's a- bullshit. Well, Toxin. They're just, name they're, one. Just, they're just using that like as a vague term, but toxins do exist. Like no, yeah. d- Toxins get so cycled out of your to body by like, default. Yeah. And, and also, you're, you're, whenever you detoxify, all the shit you remove from your body is replaced, like, near instantly with the same do, shit. Okay, detoxifying is not fucking real, first of all. Your, your body already does that. Your body literally filters out your toxins. You don't need eucalyptus oil yeah. suppositories to do that for you. And in fact, doing that through, like, extreme sweating or enemas or however they do it can actually be more harmful than helpful. Detox is just supposed extreme. to be fad diets and sell books and sell some product like green tea detox. It comes with like a week supply of green tea, shit like that. Yeah, it's just marketing. It's a scam. 
Yeah, but toxins I know that do there exist. can be some like toxins, as in like poisonous material in you. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's just what toxins mean, drugs, right? It's just toxic. That's what I thought. Maybe like for instance, if you do drugs for a long time, they can like they will be somewhat stored in your fat cells. So when you do lose your fat, they can be released and flushed out of your system. I guess. Right, At least which that's what is I saw in Doctor House. That's what your body does naturally. But you doing a fucking, yeah. like, specific kind of diet or, I don't know, pin pinch the underside of your oh, skin yeah, flaps sure. every night before you go to bed or however they recommend is not going to do jack shit, you know? And the methods through which you go through that people think are cleansing, like saunas and stuff, they can be more harmful than good. Wait, sauna, saunas are harmful? Not necessarily, but, like, if you're going He's just to giving an example. You're just dehydrating Sorry. yourself in a lot of cases. Oh, yeah, I see what you yeah. mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I know one also that is no directly one. harmful is getting enemas for no reason. Um, yeah. So a lot of people, like, look at your colon and they go, oh, my God, all that all that old poo-poo in there. <laughs> oh, How that's so... How people look at your colon? Well, there's, like, health nuts who get enemas to, like, feel healthy and clean out and flush out their body. And they go, oh, I just feel so so empty and clean. Yeah, and it's, like, fuck? all that I... impacted stuff. It turns out that stuff's good for you and you I... want a little bit in there because it regulates your fucking uh. gut health. I, I looked up detox on fucking uh, image Why? search and people are sharing photos of like gigantic mucusy shits that yeah. I guess they somehow fished out of their assholes. Yeah. What the fuck? They go fucking Where does hardcore. that even come from? It's disgusting. I feel like that person just removed their own colon. Wait, what? what? I, I thought, um, what do you call it? Enemas were, obviously they're only meant to be used if you've got like a blockage or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is it accurate? What, so they, they they do enemas to get the shit out that's eventually going uh, to be shit out anyway? So the big one right now is just called a coffee enema. And they do a coffee uh. enema because they believe it's a cleansing, detoxifying thing. Yeah. Everyone has this huge fear of toxins all of a sudden. Yeah, but what are they actually detoxing? Because that shit's Nothing. coming out they're, one way or another. They're, they're, not, they're not their doing anything at all. all. I re yeah, I really fuck? don't get that. That yeah. shit's coming out whether they put an enema up there or not. You know what I mean? It's all pseudoscience. It always has been. Yeah. You know what really upset me at some point is that the one article, the, the one news piece about a woman who almost killed her child because she was giving it fucking bleach enemas or something. What to the cleanse fuck? it or help it. Be, 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 oh, yeah, she was, I remember that. You know, the typical member of one of those fucking uh, Facebook groups, and apparently she used to give him regular bleach enemas or some. I don't know if it was bleach or some other chemical, but basically the kids. Yeah. Yeah, and and the kids fucking colon started to basically just peel nope. itself and die. Good God. I don't think parents were allowed to touch their kids' buttholes. Like, I mean, uh, in terms of society's acceptance of it. Have we talked about this before? I'm getting a deja vu, but what the fuck are suppositories for again? I mean, I guess sometimes you have to. We we did talk about this, yeah. Your ass or... It goes up their ass and it melts inside their colon, right? What's that noise? Can anyone yeah. hear rain? I mean, yeah, that is rain, actually. I don't know why. Is that you so or Charlie? Loud. Let me close the windows. No, that's me. Why would it be me? We it's live boring. like super close <laughs> and yeah. it, was, it was it was literally just I raining. Isolated you specifically to Charlie's house. You didn't hear that it was just raining just now, Charlie? No, I didn't hear the rain. Oh yeah, it's it's like cloudy and rainy right now. Uh, I'm gonna look up weather in Tampa to see if you're lying to me. It just says it's mostly cloudy. It rained a little bit. Got a but while you're looking up the weather, Andrew can tell us about Express B Express VPN. I can look yeah, up can Express my weather data? VPN. If you want to check your weather data, Jackson, you might go to a website that says, "Hey, here's your current location and here's the weather for it," and you'd go, "Well, that's great, but you know, I just I want to play a little prank. I want to play a little trick on the weather service. I want them to believe that I'm in Canada, <laughs> and I want them to say, "Here's your weather in Canada," and you'll go, "Ha ha." <laughs> I was never in Canada to begin with. I instead changed my location via ExpressVPN. There are tons of VPN providers out there, and you probably heard a couple of them. And some of you have probably used a VPN before. But 
I can tell you with full confidence that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market. They don't log your data. They've developed a technology called Trusted Server that makes it impossible for servers to log any of your info. They are super fast. Many other VPNs are slow. They don't care about your connection. They just slap you onto whatever internet pipeline they find just to get your money. Mm -hmm. And the last thing about ExpressVPN you need to know is that unlike other VPNs, you don't have to input or program anything. You fire up an app, click one button, and you've been connected. If you want to protect yourself with the VPN that we all use and trust, you can use expressvpn.com slash official today and get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash official. You can learn more. And it's cheap to begin with. It is cheap to begin with. Kaya has been a regular longtime user even well before they sponsored this show. Kaya, why don't you finish up this this little pitch for uh, ExpressVPN since you're so experienced. Well, you pretty much already said all of it. I have it on right now. My connection is perfect, fast, speedy, low ping, and it's with me connected to the, you know, and even the American servers too. Uh, yeah, I mean, what's what else is there to say? Fuck region blocking. Fuck you. Fuck every company that does it. So I have ExpressVPN up yours, up your ass. I put it in you just like a fucking bleach <laughs> enema and I get the fucking content I want. Okay. ExpressVPN.com slash official. Nice. Sounds good. You boys watch any of Logan Paul's Pokemon opening? Wait, what? I'll take that as nose from across the board. He bought a $200,000 Pokemon booster box and sold each individual pack for eleven grand. What the fuck? Opened them on stream. Yeah. Wait, so he didn't no open them? Oh, means. well, it was a fundraiser. Well, no, he made that money on the packs he sold, but he raised money during the stream, yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, wait, are you sure he didn't donate the money as well? I feel mm, like... Not that I saw. Okay. Well, wait, so so he opened the box and then sold the individual card packs that were in the box for 11 grand. So he made a profit? Yeah, so he bought for 200 grand, sold 35 packs for 11 grand each. So he made 350 grand off of that ish. That's a pretty big so profit, yeah. I would do that every week for... Yeah, why... Why are they so expensive? Were they like super rare cards? Yeah, it's base set first edition shit. Yeah, which is oh. the, the like very first printing of the card game ever. Yeah, those were the Pokemon cards mm. Jesus was playing with. <laughs> that, that, they cost 30 <laughs> pieces of silver per pack. <laughs> Maybe that's what Judas got. <laughs> like the first edition. A so, yeah, Judas got the 30 pieces of silver and then he opened his pack and it sucked. So he wanted to return the money because he felt bad. <laughs> Jesus promised hey, him a Jesus. Charizard. Son of God, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. Is there anything of interest on that, Charlie? Is there anything about it you wanted to nope. tell us? No, that's about it, really. Okay, great. You should try that. Um, I'm not gonna spend 200 grand on a, a Pokemon <laughs> booster box. Yeah, but you make literally one and a half times in profit. If you're selling yeah. to an audience of rabid spenders like he was, apparently, like it was mainly YouTubers that were buying them. You don't think then, oh. you don't think people, other YouTubers, would buy your Yu-Gi-Oh cards? My Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yeah, it's the same concept, but you're in the Yu-Gi-Oh. Are you insane? I would never sell my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> oh my God. Not, even, <laughs> not even for $11,000, like one of those small little packs. Oh, God. Well, for a pack, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah if it's a pack, yeah. Well, that's, that's my point. If, if Mr. Beast came up to you, Charlie, and said, I want to buy each of your packs for $11,000 each, you'd sell them. <laughs> how, oh, oh, Charlie, yeah. how bad would you feel, though, if you did sell one of those packs for $11,000 and it had that dragon card in it? I already well, have the dragon card, so yeah. I well, care. I know, but it, in this example, like another ultra rare card, like it, it had that ultra rare card in it that you were looking for, and then you sold that. God, I yeah, don't I'd think feel real dumb. I'd be, I'd be upset. Yeah, so I don't think Aww. you should sell any card. Back I agree. Ever. Couldn't you just 
make it a, I don't know, critical collector's item where you just sign the Yu-Gi-Oh cards and sell them? Or would that be illegal? <laughs> I don't think it'd be illegal. It'd just be real douchey. And I don't think it'd be very cool. <laughs> well, Charlie, I'm glad you mentioned this box thing because literally just earlier today, Logan Paul announced he's buying a second box and doing it again. Ah, what do you know? Mm. I can't believe it. What, like, why wouldn't you? He made $150,000 yeah. profit on top and of the And also, apparently money. he yeah. pulled a fucking first edition foil Charizard, which is worth, like, thousands and thousands and thousands. It's like, yeah, it's like 60 grand. Yeah, so. So, in other words, you chose the wrong card game, Charlie. It'd be such a power <laughs> move if he got that card and just ripped it on stream. Like, just fucking tore it to pieces. Actually, Andrew, Yu-Gi-Oh has the most expensive rare card. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh has a two million. This sold for two million dollars. It what was a fuck? Black Luster Soldier tournament card. It sold for two million dollars like six or seven years ago, which is significantly higher than Magic, Pokemon, and every other like non-sports related trading card game. Yeah, I knew. I knew the tournament Black Luster was super like the most expensive card. I didn't know it was two million dollars. That's insane. Mm -hmm. It's actually worth ten million by today's price. Why is it that expensive? It's it's like a really special card. It's like a made out of metal or some shit or like rare earth minerals. I don't fucking know. Was there only one essential oil tournament? Yeah, there's only one in existence. Yeah. Huh. Could How you hard it could it conceivably be to fake those? To just print your own? Uh, I don't know. I wonder how hard that would be. Well, you don't, you'd only be able to compare it to one other card in, the, in existence, really. Yeah, true. So it'd be really hard to detect, I think. Oh, I mean, sorry, very well, hard to recreate since you would never be able to see yeah. that card, really. Also, I assume that the person who owns it also gets a fucking certificate of authenticity yeah. or something with it oh yeah yeah so we we have to break into who owns Yu-Gi-Oh? konami yes konami yeah use one of their fax machines to print a certificate for us all right we're hijacking konami <laughs> with our cart railgun <laughs> to get another black oh, for real though, i mean people card. print i mean I assume the smaller but still rare cards, they don't come with fucking certificates or anything and no one's going to check for authenticity. You know, the ones that are worth just a few hundred bucks or... Charlie, yeah. Charlie pulled one for what? What was it? A thousand or ten thousand? I can't remember. 12, it was twelve hundred dollars. Yes, so twelve hundred dollars. That didn't come with a certificate or anything. But if he were to sell it to... <laughs> if he were to sell it to someone, I assume that you would, you would need to provide like pretty, you know... Solid yeah, proof I, I'm sure there's like mm. a whole group of like super nerds, like some real like ultra nerds that would be able to tell a fabricated card from a real one. Yeah, like a Yu-Gi-Oh fine art inspector, you know, the ones with the little yeah. monocles that go right up close to Yu-Gi-Oh cards and check the, <laughs> if they're pixel perfect. Yeah, they lick it to make sure it has the same like taste as an authentic card. Yeah, no Put it in an MRI. finger on it. Uh, or a CAT scan or whatever they used to look at those mummies <laughs> and see into, into the sarcophagus. <laughs> yeah. But that'd be pretty fucking cool if I could ever get that $2 million Black Luster Soldier. Yeah, good oh, luck. Oh yeah, you'll pull it any day now. Good that luck. one card in existence. Just keep <laughs> buying more. Eventually it'll slip into the production line. Yeah, yeah, yeah somehow it's gonna fall in yeah. there. Who owns so it? Who actually? owns it? Yeah, that's what I was just looking up. Is it owned by Mr. Konami? It's like owned by Mr. Beast. He bought it from Logan Paul. Let's see. Does it even look cool? Uh, I looked it up. It also, looks, Charlie, okay. I got bad news for you, what dude. What is it called? It's not the most expensive card from collectible cards. What is that? Mike Trout's baseball card sold. No, I said, I said, yeah, I said that's not uh, sports oh, related. Oh, not sp okay. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mike Trout's what? Mike Trout's baseball card sold for almost four million dollars. That was earlier this year, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, actually, in August. Yep. Well, I don't lie. It's three point nine three. That's not impressive. That, Ooh, that's still that four, almost four million dollars, Jackson. It's not four Matt, million though. Matt found his dad's old stash of baseball and basketball cards, and that shit is exploding in value. I'm hoping when Matt and I dig through that, we'll find like a three million dollar card or <laughs> some shit. He's stealing his dad's. Yeah, are you gonna yeah. trade that one for that's one with the Black Luster Soldier, Charlie? 
We're splitting it. I'll, I'll, uh, All right, yeah, we'll rip it up. in half. You get the top half, and I'll take the <laughs> bottom half. You're stealing another man's collection. That's so no, dishonorable. He, he knows. He knows where it's he going. He knows it's he worth knows. millions. Yeah. Yeah. Trust me. And he said he doesn't care. As long as we're having <laughs> he'll, fun. He'll care when there's like a $4 million card in there. Yeah. Who, uh, who takes ownership then? Uh, I guess his dad. He bought him like 50 fucking years ago. It's crazy. He simply just came in and valued him. Oh, wait. Wait, so this card is actually signed by the baseball player? The Mike Trout one? I don't know. It looks like it's got a signature on it. I wonder what happened to all of my old sports cards. I used to have a ton. Has there ever been, like, a celebrity killed just so people could sell their signature? Like an assassination for the... You know, to be able to sell a collector's item? I don't think people give a fuck about uh, signatures anymore. Well, with the internet, they're kind of worthless. Mm. Yeah. Like part of part of the whole what appeal of signatures. No, well, part of the what? whole it's not the whole argument, but part of it was, you know, you get a signature by meeting someone. You go to their show or you mm. see them somewhere and you go, oh, my God, I want your autograph. But now with the Internet and constant entertainment feeds and live streaming, it's like, who gives a shit? No, they're just still, everywhere. Uh, no, no. Sig signatures absolutely are still an important but, part but of But only for like real you get to t no, celebrities. You get to take that if you met a, uh, if you yeah, met a, a celebrity I mean. on the on the street, you would absolutely ask to get these signatures. But see, I think they've been. I think those have been replaced by selfies. People would much rather take a photo with someone famous than get their autograph. That's uh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's I, I think signatures both, are I meant like just dead because they've been replaced by other things, whether it's live streaming or taking a photo with them or I any of think, that. I, I still don't think they're dead. I think people still get stuff signed. Yeah, that's signature is still worth more than watching someone stream. And I meant like if you know if you got fucking Kobe to sign the winning ball, you know. Well, that's, oh, well, that's, that's different. Fucking different. Things, that's gonna... different though. Yeah. I mean. Anyway, my question was, has there ever been like an assassination for the sake of driving no. up the value of such a ball, for instance? I because I'm sure the price exploded know. when Kobe did. Hmm. I mean, are you trying to insinuate that it was an inside job on, on Kobe's untimely <laughs> was demise? Was there a famous no. person signature in the Twin Towers? Like, is that what you're talking about, Kaya? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, once once the Sydney Opera House explodes, my little <laughs> plushie of the Sydney Opera House is going to be worth so much more. Oh man, we need to see a show at the Sydney Opera House, get tickets, and then enact our plan the week later, and then sell those tickets on the internet. Oh, I like that idea. Like the last tickets of the last show to be yeah. ever shown at the fucking before the Sydney tragic Opera train House. accident of twenty twenty. Son. We should also get it signed by all the opera singers because, you know, who the fuck else would ever be in line to get anything signed by those losers? And then, just once they're famous, after getting blown up by a railgun cart, <laughs> we can sell those. <laughs> it's a perfect plan. I don't know why no one else has done it. Speaking of a perfect plan, Andrew, why don't you tell people about getting honey? Oh my god. It's so perfect when you get honey. It's perfect. Because <laughs> you sit down... And you, you go, I'm going to buy everything online. There's a pandemic. I'm going to buy everything online. There's more vendors to compare. I'm going to buy everything online. I don't have to leave my house. I'm going to buy everything online. They ship it all to my door. That's, that's what you say every single day. And then you go, you know, this is great. I live in a modern fucking society with every comfort of home. And I'm able to get what I need to my house in the easiest of terms. Boy. Do I wish I could get more, such as better prices, such as potential savings, such as better comparison tools? Well, thanks to Honey, a free browser extension, you can scour the internet for promo codes and apply the best ones right to your shopping cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, from gaming products to fashion brands, even food. Probably even cart stores. Probably even train stores. If Honey <laughs> finds a working mm. coupon, you will watch prices drop. You can save money on pizza 
for crying out loud. I did that. I did that. I saved money on pizza just the other night. I brought that money. up because I did that a while back too. Hey. Yeah. Nice. Pizza buddies. Yeah. Honey buddies, really. Oh, baby. Honey but I Aww. wish they sold honey with honey through honey. The ultimate well, honey. I'm sure, I'm sure you can. Collector's edition honey jars. Yeah, they give should. me my $2 million honey jar framed. Get I got it used to be four million, but I used honey to get a coupon. If you don't already have honey, you could be missing out on free savings. It is literally free and installs in a few seconds. If you are tired of me saying that honey is free, I don't care. Because it's literally free <laughs> for me to say so. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash official. That's joinhoney.com slash official. You really have no reason not to do it. And they could steal that slogan from me and use it. Joinhoney.com slash official. Nice. Thank you, Kaya, honey. Of course. I actually hmm. I actually had something that I wanted to ask you. I purposefully did not read into this. I saw the headlines, but I didn't read into it because I thought you were going to bring it up on this episode of the podcast, and I'm shocked that you haven't. But uh, John McAfee, arrested. Guest of the episode. I don't know, but he gets arrested like every month. <laughs> it's not really a special occurrence. When, when he came on our show, he told us about how we got arrested in every city he goes to. I'm sure they'll... Has he not faked a heart attack yet? I haven't really read the story, but he should. Oh, I was... I, I thought you would have been very clued in. I thought he, like, actually, like, this was a big deal for him because I thought he was being extradited to America or something over it. Is he? I have no, no shit. Well, I, then he's I, again, fucked. I, well, I, th I thought... I thought you would know. <laughs> well, I guess we shouldn't have brought this up. No, well. sorry, but... I mean, I did hear that he's now facing uh, tax evasion. Yeah, he being go. one of the. He you know, they're gonna I'll rape him hard. I'll, I'll read the headline for you, or, or the first uh, sentence. Antivirus software entrepreneur John McAfee has been arrested in Spain and faces extradition to the U.S., where he has been charged with tax evasion. So he's facing extradition, I suppose. Mm -hmm. He could face up to thirty years in prison. So the next time you hear from John McAfee on the podcast. Might be through his uh, like his one phone call. Maybe he'll call us and ask for help. He might not even be the first prisoner we have on the show. Um, well, he's definitely not the first prisoner. Us. We we had the from prison. Guy. Oh, from prison. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, who did so we have? Doug told me. Huh? Jackson, who do we have that also went to prison? The Brunescape guy, Josh. Oh, Josh. oh, oh! I thought you were talking about like currently in prison or some shit. I was like, what the fuck? Okay. No, no, no. No, we should have him on again, though. He was really fun. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Mm. Okay, what were you saying, Kai? Um, Doug told me he could hook us up with the Alaskan Avenger, if there's any interest. How the My fuck does he know? Scrape from prison. <laughs> what? How does he know the Alaskan Avenger? He was his victim. The Alaskan Avenger's long-lost sister <laughs> is now currently running a free Jason campaign for the Alaskan Avenger. She called into the Who's Right podcast, so they're in contact now. And wow. we'll see. Either way, it's basically Doug's gift for all the years of friendship to me is that, you know, I get to have the Alaskan Avenger first. Would that really be a good idea to worship a serial killer? First of all, he hasn't killed anyone. Two, he, even if he did, he should have killed all of them. They were all pedophiles, remember? No, I, I know it what he did. was a bunch of child molesters. Yeah, no, I, I get that. But is that really like the best idea to just start appreciating the man who beat people within an inch of their life? Yes, if they're pedophiles. But unfortunately, I'm just kind of reluctant because I don't feel like he could really openly talk about it as much as we'd want him to, because obviously he can't say anything that would, you know, ruin his chances of parole because he has to pretend that he regrets it and I should have never done that and blah, blah, blah. And if that's just going to be the line, then I don't really even want to talk to him. Maybe once he's out. Like his sister, <laughs> Buck proposed that they, um, so since he used a hammer, he proposed that she should sell hammer merch or like signed that's hammers so and shit. so goddamn dark. <laughs> it's funny. It, I do it, it but again, unfortunately, way, yeah. it would 
it will kind of, you know, it doesn't look good in front of the parole board. If they, so you know, if they my question is, how, how do selling we, hammer merch? I, I get it. Like p- pedophiles bad, obviously De- they deserve death, whatever. But like, how do we know that he actually is kill? He killed those pedophiles for that reason. Or if he just chose, he was smart enough to choose the one group of people in the world that everyone detests to then like, you know, do a sociopathic shit. Too. Yeah, you know what I or mean? what if he's I a pedophile care. and just wanted to be the last one standing? <laughs> Took out his competition. Yeah, now no one can stop him. <laughs> Except the parole board. <laughs> Except the law. I don't care for what reason he did it. At the end of the day, the guy wanted to steal shit. Fine, th- not, it's, not it's, that it's, noble. But if you're going to steal... It, no, no, it's, you're possible, from the right it's crowd. possible to not feel sorry for the pedophiles, but also be against a vigilant, like that kind of killing. Because well, he wasn't a vigilante. He was stealing, right? Like he just stole from pedophiles and beat the shit out <laughs> of them. He's right? an anti-hero. Yes, Jesus, you guys are so, you guys are such fucking bus kills. It's a guy who ran out of prison, got a hammer, fucking went down the sex offender registry for actual child molesters, whose crime was molesting kids, not fucking pissing in public or anything. By the way, broke and stole their laptops and just beat them within an inch of their lives. It's a funny story. You don't have to overanalyze it. He's a great hero. To me. But again, unfortunately, uh, I don't think you could really talk about his adventures as much as or in the way that, you know, would be entertaining if he has to look good in front of the prison people and tell them that he regrets it and he's very remorseful for hurting a bunch of subhumans. Shouldn't have gotten caught, Jason. Still, I'm a fan. That's an autograph I'd like to get one day. On a hammer. Well, oh, there's a petition. I, I disagree. So I, I assume that episode would be a buzzkill episode. What are you going to act like the parole board and ask him if he regrets it? Don't you no. feel any shame for hurting pedophiles? Don't you think that vigilantism is wrong? Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know what I would ask him. That's why I don't think it would be an entertaining episode or a good episode. I'll take my business to the Who's Right podcast. Then. I'll interview <laughs> him. <there. laughs> You're free to. Anyway, we've been going for an hour and a bit. We can wrap up. I'd okay. say we wrap. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening to this week's episode of The Official Podcast. We'll, uh, Patreon.com slash The Official Podcast for bonus episodes, movie nights, uh, among other stuff. We've got just a whole bunch of bonus content over there for you to sink your teeth into. So go check that out. Uh, year-long memberships now as well, right, Kaya? We've got the option for an annual mm-hmm, discounted. Annual yeah. Discounted. You can just pay once and then you know, yeah. get a whole year's worth of access to our Patreon server where everyone's for chatting a discounted live. Price. We have the yeah. for a discounted price, all the bonuses we do, you know, two a month at the very least, plus all the movie nights now. We still have to watch what was it again? Cats? Yep. Oh fuck. Oh no. god, is that what's next? We'll do that next week. Fuck me. All right. All right. Oh, we got to bring Danny along for that one. As we well. should not bring Danny. Danny. Get out of it. Make him watch oh, yeah. it again. Yeah, we should. Jackson and anyway, I are gonna like zone out, and then when Mister Mistopheles comes on, that's when we'll that's actually get into part. it. Actually, I was thinking about it. There was another part of that movie that I did like. It was the Rumpelstiltskin guy, the tap dancing. Oh one. yeah, the train. The train was all right too. Rum tum tumble dump or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the train cat. He was he was all right. But everyone yeah, knows Mr. Right. Mistopheles is the fucking show stealer of that movie. Absolutely, the most adorable cat. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening to this week's episode. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. Bye.